Volkswagen India delivered on its promise of bringing new SUVs to the country. And while this year was essentially called the year of the tycoon, there is one more SUV that's itching to be in the limelight. The Tiguan. The Tiguan facelift is here and it replaces the 7-seater Tiguan All Space. So yes, the company has decided to change the power dynamics again. It does seem like a Game of Thrones like situation here, doesn't it? The Volkswagen Tiguan, the 5 seater version, has finally returned to replace the All Space as the company's flagship SUV in India. And the Tiguan has returned with a much needed facelift. And unlike the previous version, which was a diesel only SUV, this one right here is a petrol only SUV. So, is this capable enough to replace the All Space as the company's flagship SUV? Let's find out. The Tiguan comes with updated design and styling in line with the company's latest design language. Up front you have the wide chrome grille featuring the new Volkswagen logo and it's flanked by new IQ light matrix LED headlights which are made of 24 individual LEDs for better illumination. The bold line on the hood and the new bumper accentuates the SUV's aggressive front end while the wider air dam aids in better airflow. Furthermore, the glossy black inserts, chrome details and four silver skid plate give the SUV a premium and robust look. Now when you come to the profile, you can see that the Tiguan gets these nice pronounced lines, these roof rails and flared wheel arches that add a bit of muscle to the SUV. The wheels here are also new, these are 18 inches right here. And when you come to the back, here you get a redesigned look which looks much nicer. But the highlight of course are these new LED tail lamps. These come with two signature light patterns, uh, one for the regular tail lamps and one for the brake lights. So these interchange and Volkswagen calls this the click clack effect. In terms of size, the Tiguan facelift is still 312mm shorter compared to the Allspace and it comes with a 108mm shorter wheelbase. On the other hand, it is longer than rivals like the Jeep Compass, Hyundai Tucson and Citroën's C5 Aircross. But the C5 is wider, taller and comes with a marginally longer wheelbase compared to the Tiguan and the others. However, it's a diesel-only SUV. That said, the Tiguan gets the best-in-class boot space of 615 litres. Once you get inside the cabin, you'll notice that this too has been updated. You get this nice premium feel with this soft-touch plastic on the dashboard, these new Vienna leather seat covers, and you also get this new flat-bottom steering wheel, which is very similar to the one on the Tiguan. Apart from that, you also get a 10-inch instrument cluster which comes with Volkswagen's virtual cockpit system. You also get this 8-inch touchscreen infotainment system which comes with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto and you also have access to Volkswagen's MyConnect app which offers you some more connected features like vehicle tracking, uh, driving behavior and theft alert. You also get some convenience features like a three-zone climate control, two up front and one at the back and you also get two C-type USB chargers over here. However, the Tiguan misses out on features like wireless phone charger and ventilated seats, features that are available in the smaller and less expensive Tiguan. That said, you do get a panoramic sunroof, cooled glove box, push button start, adjustable headrests for all five occupants, and a ton of storage options. You can even use the foot swipe motion to open the electrically operated tailgate. In terms of features, you get 6 airbags, isofix child seat mounts, 3 point seat belts for all passengers. The Tiguan also features ABS with EBD, electronic stability control, hill descent control and disc brakes for all four wheels. Now this 2021 Tiguan facelift is powered by a 2 litre TSI turbocharged petrol engine. And this replaces the older diesel engine which was available in the pre-facelift Tiguan that was available in India a couple of years ago. Uh, this is the same engine that also came with the Allspace. 
So the power figures remain the same. It's 187 bhp and uh, 320 newton meters of peak torque. And the torque is still available as low as 1500 rpm. So your initial acceleration and the and the surge of power is there. You can feel it right from the word go, and uh, that certainly puts a smile on your face when you when you flow the engine. In fact, if you remember uh, when Amya tested the all space last year, he had mentioned that it is as if driving a hot hatch. And uh, with this new Tiguan, which is a smaller car, car compared to the all space that hot hatch effect is even more potent and you feel that right from the right from the point you st step on the accelerator the tiguan comes mated to the same seven speed dsg automatic gearbox as standard and we truly love it the shifts are seamless and precise and it's also quick so even if you floor the throttle it responds well and doesn't feel sluggish at all the DSG unit sends power to all four wheels via Volkswagen's trusted four-motion all-wheel drive system, which comes as standard. It distributes power between the front and rear wheels depending on the road condition, and you also get an off-road and a snow mode, so it can handle any kind of terrain. We loved the ride quality on the all space and we knew it would be equally good in the 5-seater Tiguan and it does not disappoint. The SUV handles all the undulations on the road with utmost ease offering a smooth ride. The suspension is a bit on the stiffer side to achieve that great handling. However, it won't feel any discomfort inside the cabin. The NVH levels are also very good and the flat bottom steering wheel is speed sensitive so it weighs up nicely at higher speeds, imparting more confidence. The Volkswagen Tiguan facelift is offered in only one elegance variant and has been launched at an introductory X showroom price of 31,99,000 rupees. In comparison, the top end petrol variant of the Compass is 5,65,000 rupees cheaper, whereas the Tucson is nearly 7,60,000 rupees less expensive. The diesel only C5 Aircross is about 80,000 rupees more expensive than the Tiguan. However, they do not come with all wheel drive, and the Tucson is up for a generation upgrade next year. But if you're looking for a seven seater option, then Skoda will launch the Kodiak facelift in January 2022. Nonetheless, the Tiguan is a well-built SUV with a powerful and capable drivetrain and a host of premium features. And if you're looking for something like that, you should definitely consider it. So coming back to our earlier question, is the Tiguan a worthy flagship SUV? <laughs> Hell yes! It's described as a maxi styled sports scooter. The new Yamaha Aerox 155 sits in a unique position in the Indian scooter market. As the name suggests, it's powered by a 155cc engine with quite sharp looks, which complement its sporty intent. The Aerox 155 is quite a package. It's a product which has all the qualities to make Yamaha India stand out in the scooter segment. In the 1980s, when Yamaha started operations in India, Yamaha established itself as a manufacturer of performance-oriented motorcycles. The Yamaha RD350 and the Yamaha RX100 in the two-stroke era 
became iconic motorcycle and continue to remain so. But Yamaha has not had very exciting products in the scooter segment. That is until now. Now Yamaha has set the cat amongst the pigeons with the new Aerox 155. This one is a maxi style performance oriented scooter with an engine derived from the entry level sports bike, the very popular R15. Yes, the engine is a 155cc single cylinder four valve unit and also gets variable valve actuation technology. The radiator on the side underscores its liquid cooling system, the first for any small displacement scooter sold in India. The design too is striking. It's got a hunkered down stance, looks ready to sprint with LED lights, big 14 inch wheels, fat tires and a chunky exhaust adding muscle to what is otherwise still a scooter design. Unlike other scooters, the floorboard isn't flat and there is a central spine running along with an X-shaped design which looks quite good in profile but limits footboard space. There is an LCD instrument console with even a rev counter as well as odometer, trip meter and fuel consumption readouts. But no turn-by-turn -turn navigation is offered even though there is a dedicated app with Bluetooth connectivity. What the Aerox 155 does have is definite road presence. The Aerox 155 may be a scooter but it's not very practical if you're looking at practicality of a scooter. For starters, you have to swing a leg over it because there's hardly any space on the footboard to keep stuff or to take a bag or two here if you're looking for that kind of practicality. Overall, in terms of features, it's got a nice LCD instrument console with Bluetooth connectivity, but sadly, there's no turn-by-turn -turn navigation. Uh, under seat storage space, it's very handy, you can open it. It's got plenty of space, 24 and a half liters of space. If you want to store a full-face helmet, uh, you can't store it like this. But if you flip it on the other side, you can store a full face helmet very comfortably. Now, uh, there's a small glove box here also with a charger, but it's a very small space. You can put your phone inside, charge it on the go. And uh, fuel lid is here, the fuel tank is here. Nice wide seats and plenty of room to keep your feet comfortably if you're in the mood for a longest drive, longest ride, rather than the daily commute within the city. Overall nice LED headlights, LED tail light, and it does get blinkers, but those are not LED. But you can, of course, go for an aftermarket original Yamaha LED pair of blinkers for about 3,000 rupees. And uh, suspension doesn't get any adjustability, but there's aftermarket KYB adjustable rear shocks, which are available for about 17,000 odd rupees. Overall, I quite like the design, very different from what you see on the streets. and sporty, youthful and quite nice looking from any angle you look at it. On the move, there's no instant surge of power from the get-go. But once you get moving, you realize that the Aerox 155 is quite quick. Acceleration is linear and triple digit speeds are reached without any effort and in no time. In the city, there's ample power to keep ahead of other two-wheeled commuters. And out on the highway, it settles into a steady cruise with more than enough performance to maintain decent highway speeds and some more. What could have been better is the feel of brakes. And then there's the ride quality, which is a little stiff to complement its handling but it's steady and maintains composure both in a straight line as well as around bends. The Aerox 155 is tuned to be a performance oriented scooter so the suspension is also slightly on the stiffer side. It's not uncomfortable as such, don't get me wrong, 
But if you're going over bad roads or broken roads, you can feel the hits a little bit. But what that translates to is very good handling. So you can take corners with very good confidence and it's stable no matter where you are, within the city, where you're cornering, everywhere it's stable. The seat uh, height is about 790 mm. My height is 5'9", just about 5'9". For me, it's quite comfortable, but if your height is around 5'5", five, five, it's quite broad also, so that, that may be a little bit of a border. But what is going to be a problem for six-footers is knee space. For me, it's fine, but somebody who's six feet or slightly above that, the knee room could be a bit of a slight problem. But all those shortcomings, you'll forget about it as soon as you fire it up and go for a ride. Because that engine, it's quick. It goes to 80 like nobody's business and you can cruise at 90, 100 all day long. I clocked about an indicated 110, but I suspect it will go even beyond that. 60 to 90, it's got ample power, ample pickup, ample pull to leave everyone behind you, including 150cc motorcycles. The Yamaha AROX 155 may not be a practical everyday scooter to be used by the entire family. As a performance-oriented scooter, it certainly makes for a well-rounded product. As a bonus, it can even do the occasional long-distance highway run quite capably and comfortably. You may not get the comfort or the practicality, but as a performance-oriented scooter, it ticks all the boxes. In fact, I would go all out to recommend it's the best performance-oriented scooter that's available on sale right now in India. So its performance and sporty looks is what you're looking for. This one is worth every single rupee that you pay for it. In terms of competition, it goes up against the Aprilia SR 160, which is priced a little bit low for the base variant, but for the race and the premium variants of the SR 160, is priced more or less at par with the AROX 155. But I'll go out on a limb and say, this one still is the best performance oriented scooter that you can buy in India right now. Priced at nearly 1,30,000 rupees egg showroom, the Yamaha AROX 155 isn't what you'd call an affordable or practical everyday scooter. But if it's performance and handling you're after, the AROX 155 offers a level of enjoyment and thrill possibly not offered by any scooter on sale right now in the country. And that makes it a no-brainer that this one is definitely amongst the very best scooters available out there right now.